afternoon everyone well it's a rarity to talk to the chairman of itc and especially to talk to the chairman of itc in taj <laughs> but he's kind enough to, to talk to us in taj after having meet, eaten a meal which is not an itc so we're looking forward for an engaging conversation and uh, i'm going to first start with uh, the prime minister's speech last evening on uh, india uh, india is firing it's firing full cylinders looking at your in your ci capacity and as a chairman of itc since you have a deep understanding of businesses do you think 6 to 7% gdp growth for next couple of years is something which is not impossible and it is something which is entirely possible and conceivable so first of all uh, thank you tikunj for having me here <laughs> uh yes i i i think this is eminently possible i think that's the kind of number we should be aiming for at the minimum you see uh growing at 7% which is what is the estimate for the year and and beyond this year at a time when the whole world is struggling when the global growth is the least in a long period global trade is is significantly lower than what it used to be at that time itself we're growing at 7% i think it's it's quite a commendable achievement and that certainly gives us the confidence and the confidence is not emanating i think just from numbers the business confidence is not coming uh, just by this gdp numbers it is reflected in even the various cii surveys that have been happening with the business leaders on capacity utilization and confidence and so on and so forth and you know this is so because of the very strong foundation that is getting built over several years a lot of very purposeful policy interventions have happened if you look at the macros our inflation for example is is very well managed there was a time when we we had higher inflation than the developed economies today it's the reverse that that talks a lot about the astute management of the macros in the economy the public infrastructure digital infrastructure you know the the investments and the uh, incentives to start to make india into a manufacturing hub i think all these augur well for the future there is also focus on the agriculture sector the fpo bringing technology this budget talked about specific sectoral focused now focus has been brought in on to innovation i think india is anyway a powerhouse of uh, services and we do have a demographic advantage g20 has elevated india's stature in the new ge geopolitical dynamic india is the center of attraction it's it's very important from a supply chain diversification and it's only india that has the talent and the competitive uh, operating e ecosystem and the scale to be able to provide that kind of supply chain uh, uh, supply chain diversification we know that uh, you know we have a lot of tourism assets that's the new vector that we see from a policy perspective that is going to be pursued and and we do see in all the in the budget and and whatever the you know the honorable prime minister also said yesterday that the commitment to making the policy framework better dealing with some bigger ticket issues the commitment and the intent is very much there so i think i said considering all of this i think it's a very good time for india it's certainly india's decade <coughs> and probably even even beyond that so i see no reason why we should not be growing at at least that number Mr. Puri, ITC is Bharat itself, from agri to hotel, from cigarette to FMCG to paper. Now, post-COVID, uh, all kind of uh, you know normal cliches have been used to describe India and the rural economy. Uh, since you connected with the open uh, with the rural economy, if I could encourage you to connect the dots and share with us that what is happening to the rural economy? If India is growing, why is the rural economy not growing? And if 20% of uh, Indians are accounting for 80% of the consumption, but 80% of Indians still account for 20% of the consumption, if that will not grow, the base would be shaky. So it's a very good point you have uh, brought out. I think 
I think the way way to look at is that I think the Indian in the Indian economy and even the rural has been very resilient. The the I think your question emanates from the fact that the, in the reported numbers of GDP, the consumption growth has not been as much as it uh, one expects it to be. But I I think I'm quite uh, uh, I'm quite uh, at at one uh, one level reassured that the economy is resilient, it is growing, and it is growing after a spate of very serious challenges. It went through COVID. It went through huge amount of inflation on the geopolitical crisis on account of that. It has faced the brunt of extreme weather events. And we know the, you know, there are some, uh, uh, there is a larger indexing to agriculture in the rural side. Despite that, it is resilient, it is growing, maybe not growing as much as we would like it to be. And, and it is so because I think a lot of good actions have happened. You see the infrastructure that's been created, the connectivity that the rurals have got, the, the, the focus on housing, the focus on digitization. I think the, the direct benefit transfer, the, the uh, stuff like free food grain distribution, I think these are, these are some of the uh, very important steps taken in terms of the investment in the rural economy, and that's why we are seeing that it's quite resilient. Now, I, I see no reason why the growth rates will not progressively improve over a period of time. One or two good crop cycles, and we will see the whole, whole situation completely turn, because there is definitely a lot more, lot more uh, potential there, and I'm, I'm quite uh, optimistic that it's going to turn around sooner than later. There are a lot of actions also being taken to help farmers mitigate the impact of climate change. It's not easy, but some steps are already being taken. And, and all that, I think, certainly augurs well. And uh, it, it's certainly going to, I think, perform much better going forward than we have experienced in the recent past. But in the backdrop of where we are, I, I think I would, be, I would be quite reassured that it's, it's resilient. It's fairly resilient and still continuing to grow. Hmm. So, Mr. Puri, 6 to 7 percent GDP growth, I add the inflation multiplier, that makes it 11 to 12 percent growth. ITC is always growing higher than the nominal GDP growth. So, can I assume that if India will grow at 6 to 7 percent, ITC will continue to grow at 14 to 15 percent at least? <laughs> <laughs> so, I was not here for a ITC specific <laughs> question, but nonetheless, uh, let me say that uh, uh, the aspiration for uh, is certainly that we should be growing uh, much ahead of the rate of the growth of the economy. And anything that is uh, connected with domestic consumption, very much doable, and that's what uh, very much uh, doable growth rates. But there are, there are pieces that are also connected with the global context. So that's, that's something to watch out for. That's a, in a way, at least for now, it's a dampener. But there is potential as far as, uh, you know, the in Indian economy is concerned, and that's how we are looking at it. That's how we are architecting our future. We are preparing our portfolio of, of growth not only for today, tomorrow, and day after. In our parlance, we say that we have a core portfolio which, given the growing consumption in India, and the opportunity for penetration, opportunity for per capita consumption is huge. We are saying that we need to, on one hand, scale that up, two, use that to address adjacencies, and three is also build categories of the future. Some of them start scaling them, some of them incubate them. And if I was to just give an example now that you've asked me this uh, question. So if I look at uh, our, our paperboard portfolio, we have the core portfolio is value-added paperboard, which we are continuing to scale up. The adjacency to that we have identified is what we call sustainable packaging because the world is moving away from plastics. So these are, these are proprietary uh, uh, coatings on our paperboard and other packaging solutions that we have. If I was to talk about categories of the future, these are, again, plastic substitute sustainable packaging, but the second platform is around complex and, and highly engineered shapes out of, molded shapes out of plant fiber. So if I was to give you an example, 
there is a paper board, there is a paper cup in which all of us drink tea, coffee, etc. Traditionally, it had a bio seal inside. We replace it with a it, it had a poly, uh, poly coating inside. I have re replaced it with a proprietary bio seal. But the cap, which is a complex shape and must be leak proof, is still made out of plastic. So the second platform is going to develop a substitute to that, which is something that should start in March or April of uh, this year. So that's the way we are looking at it. Similarly, in, if I look at my consumer business, there is our core portfolio of staples, biscuits, noodles, so on and so forth, that we scale up. We use that to ad address adjacencies like Ashirwad is into frozen breads, into basin. And then we are incubating categories of the future like, you know, chocolates, uh, natural floor cleaner, and so on and so forth. So that's how, given the opportunity that is there in the Indian market, we're very optimistic. And that's how we are building our, building our portfolio. And our confidence also is reflected in the fact that uh, we commissioned five manufacturing facilities last year. We've started... Uh, construction of three more this year. So the journey is, uh, is continuing to participate and contribute to the growth of India. What gives you this kind of a confidence? You're investing into the future, you're incubating new businesses, you are uh, taking uh, market categories, you're challenging the existing players. What gives you this kind of a confidence to invest and spend right now? I think on, on one hand it's the promise of the, uh, the, the opportunity in the Indian market I think the, the, the manner in which the policy interventions are being uh, taken is certainly unlocking the potential of the economy. It's empowering the economy. And uh, given the stage of development that we are, I think the headroom to grow is huge. And we see that potential getting unlocked. So we're very optimistic on, on the future in India. So that's, that's the piece about the national opportunity. But equally, you know, when you take this bets, it's important for you to see, are you competitive? Are you prepared or geared up to participate in the opportunities that come in? And I think that's, that's where we continue to invest. And that's where we continue to leverage institutional capabilities. Because in a competitive world, you need to bring something unique and superior onto the table. I think one of our strengths is the synergy from diversity of our businesses. So that's what we use. We recently launched a food tech business, bringing the capabilities of our foods business and hotels business together. So that's something unique that we bring onto the table. And then we are making deep investments for competitiveness around digital sustainability, around innovation, and making our supply chains. You know, traditionally, we always looked at supply chains from an efficiency perspective of market servicing. But we are also investing a lot on building resilience, resilience from weather events. We don't have too much of a concern about supply chain disruptions globally because we are largely a make in India company. So that part is not an issue. But from weather events, we are making it, we are working to make it resilient. So with these tools that we have put in place, I think we, we, we feel quite, uh, quite optimistic of the future. So last but one question, Mr. Puri. This is 2024. Hypothetically, if we're in 2030, ET now GBS, and we're having an interaction, what do you think we are likely to discuss? What could be the shape of India and what could be the shape of ITC six years from now? Six years from now. See, our aspiration is, is that we have, to, we have to be growing at the top, top quartile. Aspiration is to be a leader in every segment. Some segment, we are leaders. Where we are not, we would like to attain leadership. And when I say leadership, it's not merely about size or profitability. I think we like to be acknowledged more importantly as a leader in terms of products that we provide to the market, the quality of service that we bring to the market, and, and a company that is, is not only creating economic value, but adding value to society by being a climate positive, inclusive enterprise, an innovative enterprise, and, and a future tech enterprise. You know, I'm just going to share with our viewers, just think about innovation when it comes to ITC. A tobacco company moves into paper, then comes into hotel, moves into FMCG. They've challenged, they've created market share, and they've used technology just to change the entire landscape per se. So Mr. Puri, 10,000 more SQs, big in hotel brands, cigarette brands, paper business. How do you manage so much? See, I think 
the the solution to this uh, lies in the in our strategy of organization we we have a distributed method we have a system of distributed leadership with, with very clear governance very clear degrees of freedom very high level of empowerment to product market clusters and we continuously continuously review that and and segment it even further so that despite complexity and growth the enterprise remains market facing it remains nimble agile and customer centric and what we do at the center is besides mentoring and allocation of resources is also to make sure that all the teams have access to the tools and technologies that they need to succeed you know we have a large we've invested ahead of time in the itc life sciences and technology center which is the largest private sector innovation center in india and that resource is available to all the teams to tap into to to meet the requirements of their customers similarly we have created infrastructure a whole whole infrastructure as far as digital is concerned so every team is empowered through the right tools and processes and with a distributed leadership i think that's how we we are able to manage and stay relevant and contemporary now i want everyone to take their pen and paper down mr puri sahab se kuch uh, recipes lete hain so i met uh, a uh, speaker yesterday he said that i have two options i can die without eating dal bukhara or i can eat dal bukhara and die right every time i come to taj they say the following that we will match itc hospitality but we can never match the dal makhani at bukhara तो क्या रेसिपी बता दीजिए इवन आई डोंट नो फॉर ऑल वी नो यू हैव टू आस्क द कस्टोडियन ऑफ दाल बुखारा द शेफ देयर ही कैन ओनली टेल यू ऑल आई कैन से इज दैट यू नो ओवर द इयर्स आई हैव ट्रैक्ट आईटीसी इट्स जस्ट बीन सच एन प्लेजर द स्टॉक इज एट एन ऑल टाइम हाई प्रॉफिट इज एट एन ऑल टाइम हाई एंड द इंडिया स्टोरी द अपील आई थिंक इज सो एक्स्ट्रॉडनरी दैट इज सच एन जॉय ट्रैकिंग आईटीसी एंड द वे थिंग्स आर इवॉल्विंग थैंक यू वेरी मच मिस्टर पुरी एंड थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग अस टुडे डिजिटल पिन थैंक यू निकुल थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच लेट्स पुरी हैंड्स टुगेदर फॉर संजीव पुरी चेयरमैन ऑफ आईडीसी थैंक यू वेरी मच सर